Let's state the domain for y equals the cos inverse of x squared minus 4. Now, the first question I want to ask you is, what numbers are you even allowed to take the cos inverse of? Remember, your graph of cos looks something like this. What y values are you allowed to get out of regular cos? The answer is anything from negative 1 up to 1. And thus, you can't cos inverse anything that isn't in between negative 1 and 1. What I mean is that x squared minus 4 has to be between minus 1 and 1 in order for you to be allowed to take the cos inverse of it. So it's this inequality that we're solving to get the domain of that function. Now, first I'm going to undo my negative 4 here. I'm going to add 4 to all sides of this inequality. I've got 3 is less than or equal to x squared is less than or equal to 5. Okay. And then, because these are both positive numbers, well, that's actually ideal. Um, I just need a number squared to be between those two values. Now, the first thing you're going to want to try to do is square root all of these separately. I'm going to show you what that gives you. It's root 3 is less than or equal to x, is less than or equal to root 5. And this is indeed part of the domain. But aren't there some negative numbers that you can square to get positive numbers? Yes, there are. Negative root 3 and negative root 5 are both squareable to get both 3 and 5. And so anything in between the two is also allowed, probably. Now I flip the direction that I put these in because when you negativize these, the thing that was bigger is actually now smaller because it's a deeper negative. And the thing that was smaller is now technically larger because it's less negative. So if x is between root 3 and root 5, it's in the domain of this function. But also if it's between negative root 5 and negative root 3, it's also part of this function. Your domain is the union of these two sets together. So if I had to write this all at once, I would say that the domain is negative root 5 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 3 union root 3 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 5, as well as pointing out that x has to be a real number. One other option for you is to copy down just this on its own. If you said that 3 is less than or equal to x squared is less than or equal to 5, a good mathematician would be able to deduce that both of these were included in that. Oh, oh boy, I forgot my negative root there. Anyways, and I forgot my root there. Wow. Anyways, a good mathematician would be able to turn that into that in their own head. But if your teacher wants an explicit domain, they're probably looking for this. Great. Thanks for being with me. And best of luck.